Hi guys, Houston Math Prep here. Today we're going to talk about just the basics of adding and subtracting fractions. So I've got two problems on the screen here. Uh, the first one, I have 3 over 11 plus 5 over 11. Uh, the next one's a subtraction. I have 7 over 9 minus 4 over 9. So the thing you'll notice about these is that they have the same thing on the bottom when we're uh, adding each problem, subtracting each problem. Uh, we call that a common denominator, right? So they have both have 11 on the bottom here, 9 on the bottom here. Uh, that's the best scenario. The best scenario is to have that common denominator. We always want to make sure we have that first when we're adding and subtracting fractions. So when you have that common denominator, uh, you can simply just keep that denominator. So since everything's over 11, we will keep the 11. And you just simply do the math that's on top. So the math on top is 3 plus 5, and 3 plus 5 is 8. And so we get an answer of 8 over 11 for the first one. For the second one, it's a similar thing. We have 9 on the bottom in each of these. So our answer is going to be over 9. And we just simply do the math on the top, 7 minus 4. Just be careful. This is a different operation. Subtract. So we get 3. Now you always want to check your answer. Uh, and make sure that you're writing it in lowest terms or the simplest form. You simplify that. So when we looked at 8 over 11 before, we didn't have anything that was in common. When I look at 3 over 9, uh, both of these are divisible by 3. So I can go ahead and divide each of these by 3, simplify the fraction. So this would become 1 over 3 and that we're just dividing the top and the bottom by 3 because they both have a common factor of 3. So the reduced version of 3 over 9 is going to be 1 third. Looking at two others, again, these are common denominator problems. They already have a common denominator for you. So again, here we have 2 over 5 plus 7 over 5. So we'll keep the over 5. That's in common. 2 plus 7 gives us 9. We have more on the top than we do on the bottom. Sometimes people call this an improper fraction. Um, these are OK, though, in a lot of uh, upper level math classes. They will want you to leave this. Uh, sometimes when we were younger, we write a maybe these as mixed numbers, um, but we're going to leave the 9 over 5 here today. Uh, similar thing down here, I have 2 thirds minus 7 thirds, so 3 is common on the bottom, we'll keep that, and 2 minus 7 is going to give us negative 5. We can write the fraction like this where we have negative 5 on top and 3 on the bottom. That's okay. What we generally will do if we have uh, the answer being negative on the top for the numerator, we'll generally bump the negative out and so nobody looking at the problem has to decide whether they think our answer is positive or negative. We're telling them now out front that our answer is a negative answer, negative 5 thirds. It's just kind of a, a good manners thing to put that negative outside of the fraction and write it as negative, and then the fraction 5 thirds. If we move on to two other problems, you'll notice now we don't have common denominator. Uh, so what we generally will do is we will look for the least common multiple. So we'll look for uh, sometimes abbreviated LCM of the denominators of the bottoms of the fraction. So you'll look for the smallest number that both of those denominators go into. So if I look at 3 and 4, then they have a least common multiple of 12. That just so happens that 3, three times 4 or 4 times 3 is 12. So what we'll want to do is always do the same thing to the top and the bottom when we're changing fractions. So if I want to make my 3 into 12, I will need to multiply it by 4. In order to keep the fraction the same value, we need to multiply the top by the same thing. On the right-hand side with the 1 fourth, to make 4 into 12, I would need to multiply by 3. So, of course, I need to multiply the top then also by 3. So this will turn into, if we rewrite everything, 4 times 2 would be 8 on top, 4 times 3 on the bottom is 12. We should be getting 12 for each of those, right? So over here, I get over 12. Uh, and then I get 3 on the top. So now we have a common denominator. Uh, the bottoms match, and so we can do what we did before on the previous couple slides and simply keep the denominator, and we'll just do the math on the top, 8 plus 3, and that will give us 11. And this will not simplify. 11 and 12 do not have any common factors we can reduce. Uh, their greatest common factor is 1, in other words. Down here with 7 over 10 minus 4 over 15, uh, looking for something that they go into. You can always multiply, like up here I multiplied uh, 3 by 4 and 4 by 3, and that gave us 12 as a common denominator. So down here we could multiply 10 by 15 and 15 by 10. Uh, that's going to give us 150. It's a really big number. It wouldn't be the least common multiple. So 
um, if you can, you really want to save yourself having to deal with bigger numbers and having to simplify a lot in the end. Uh, so least common multiple is probably best. Uh, for 10 and 15, that number is actually going to be 30. And if you're not sure um, and you don't think it would be too tedious, one thing that you could do, you can do some factorization or whatever, but an easy way to check maybe uh, real quick is just to maybe count by 10s uh, just a little bit and then count by 15s. Um, and you're just looking for the first thing on each list that pops up that's in common. So you'll notice that 30 is on this, this list and it's also on this list. So 30 is a good common denominator. There are other ways you can do prime factorizations and things, but uh, sometimes this can just be a, a quick way to check. So for the first one, I would need over 30. So I'm gonna multiply by three here. Again, do the same thing to the top. And then to make 15 into 30, I double it. So I multiply by two on the bottom and the top. So that's going to give us 3 times 7, which is 21 on the top over here, over 30. And then after the subtract, 4 times 2 on the top, which is 8. And then, of course, over 30. And again, so when we're doing subtract, we will keep the denominator, keep the bottom, and do the math on the top. 21 minus 8 would be 13, so 13 over 30. And those do not have any common factors besides 1, so we keep that. All right, moving on to something that might get people, I think, when they see it. I have a fraction and a whole number. What do I do? Um, some of you out there probably know, but let's make sure everybody knows. We need to think of this 5 over 6 plus 4. We want to think of this 4 as a fraction, and how we think of whole numbers as fractions is to write them over 1. Okay, in other words, 4 over 1 is the same as 4. Um, that's because fractions are division, right? So 4 divided by 1 would be 4, so that's how we know 4 over 1 is the same as 4. Um, not so bad with the common denominator, though, because what we really only need to do now is just turn this over 1 fraction into over 6, right? I have a denominator of 6 here, and the least common multiple of 6 and 1 is going to be 6, so I really only need to change this one, right? So multiplying by 6 over here you can see that we're not going to end up having to change both of them. We only need to change one. So I leave the 5 over 6. Here, 4 times 6 on the top is 24. And then over 6 there. So I only had to change one. And sometimes that's going to happen where we don't have to change them both. So now we'll do the math and we'll keep the over 6. And 5 plus 24 is 29. And again, we're going to leave that just like that. For this one, 11 over 12 minus 2. So again, we'll do the same thing and think of our whole number as over 1, right? 2 over 1, 2 divided by 1 is still 2. So now, instead of before I just changed everything into over 6, because I already had over 6, this one goes into 12. So I just need to multiply this one by 12. And that will allow us to do the subtract. So we get 11 over 12, we keep that minus 2 times 12 on the top is 24. The 1 times 12, of course, on the bottom, we get 12 there as well. And then just be careful with your signs here. Keep the 12 and 11 minus 24, because 24 is the bigger number, we get negative 13. And if we want to use some good manners there, we'll write the negative outside of the fraction. So there's no guesswork for anybody who looks at our answer. Okay, real quick uh, summary of all that stuff. So you need a common denominator. You might already start with it, then you don't have to worry about getting that. If you don't have it, you got to get it first. Okay, and the way you'll do that is using the least common multiple. Uh, that's probably the simplest way to do it. Once you've got that common denominator, then you're going to add or subtract the tops, right? The numerators, you're going to keep the denominator the same for your answer. Once you've done that, you can look at your answers and see if you need to simplify. And remember that if you do anything where you have a fraction and a whole number, adding and subtracting, you need to treat that whole number as something over one, as a fraction with one on the bottom. Get that common denominator and of course simplify. All right, thanks for watching guys.